Media, my name is Brendan Malone. Well, earlier this week, Materia Ture, who is the co-leader of the Greens Party in New Zealand, admitted in a public speech she gave that she had defra defrauded the welfare system uh, in, in her former life when she was on a benefit, that um, she had uh, lied and taken an extra income, uh, but she was desperate and she had a young child and, uh, and so she acted out of desperation. There's a lot of uh, controversy has been ignited since she's pu publicly made this submission. There's a big firestorm of controversy. I don't really think the big issue though is about what she did while she was on the benefit, while she was receiving these welfare payments. Um, because I, I can actually understand what it's like to be in a situation of, of desperation. I think if we're all fair to each other, then we, we could probably imagine ourselves and have the empathy with someone in a difficult situation, uh, a, a young mother with a baby, struggling to make it financially, not being 100% honest about their level of income, just to try and make ends meet. The one question I do have about that though is it does sort of raise that interesting question of what about all those other families, these New Zealand families who were honest and didn't defraud the system in that way. So for example, I grew up in a welfare home and I know for a fact that my parents were honest to a fault. Uh, when I was young, my father ended up invalided off work and on a sickness benefit and, uh, and that was most of my childhood experience that I can remember. Um, and I know that my parents were honest to a fault. They, they didn't cut corners. The system said you weren't allowed to do X or Y and Z or you had to report X, Y and Z. They followed the rules. And um, so I'm, I'm not convinced that it's actually fair to say that everyone who's desperate automatically um, defrauds the system or that somehow defrauding the system is automatically the, the default setting that you have to go to. However, I do understand that often people can get isolated and in difficult situations and when the pressure comes on, they make unethical decisions or they make wrong calls, right? I think we can all have sympathy for that. That's not really the big issue for me though, like I said. The big issue though is the question of what happened subsequent to that. And what's interesting is I was reading an article yesterday in which Materia Ture said that now that she's made this confession, now she's planning to pay back the money that she defrauded from the welfare system. Now to me that's more problematic and that raises some much bigger questions. And the much bigger questions that it raises are, why has she waited so long to pay back that money? She has been an MP now for some number of years and she has been receiving an MP salary for quite some time now. Yet she's only now, after admitting to having defrauded the system, only now is she actually said that she's going to pay it back. She still hasn't paid back that money. Now that raises that really, I think, very important question of why not? Um, seriously, why not? Why has it taken this long to actually pay back the money? I mean, we can all understand that people make uh, bad decisions under pressure. And we've all probably, uh, more possibly, we've known of or heard about situations where people have perhaps uh, made a decision to break the rules, if you like, for a time period and then to pay back or to make retribution for the thing that they did wrong. But the indication here is that for quite some time she's been earning a decent wage and she has never thought to pay back that money. And I think that's more of a problematic question. Why not? Why not? Why was the assumption automatically, well, I'm just not going to pay it back. And secondly, and I think this is a really important question, is if she hadn't confessed to actually having defrauded the system, would she now even be considering paying back that money? If she just kept quiet about this and told no one and hadn't mentioned this benefit fraud in her speech, would she also now be just as quiet about not paying the money back and, and have no intention to pay it back and just carry on as normal? I think these are the more pressing questions that I think really are the things that we need to be asking and, and focusing on rather than the, di the situation where someone's in a difficult situation and they make a, a difficult call. The question is why now? And, and to be fair, the one other thing I just want to say before finishing is uh, I think that a lot of people have been saying, well, it's not fair for her to experience all this public backlash and public criticism for the decision she, she made. Well maybe, but don't forget that she was the one who actually chose to use that decision as a political tool. She gave a public speech in an election year and this was a deliberate and calculated move and I think if you are going to use your own personal life story 
as part of a political process, you are freely choosing to do this in the public eye and make public statements of this nature, then I think you, I think it's a bit absurd to complain and to say, well, it's not fair that people are critiquing her decision or that people are challenging the decision that she made. They may be unfair in their criticisms, but I don't think it's unfair to criticise a person who is a politician, a political leader, who has chosen to use their own personal story, their own personal life as a political tool in an election year. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on Left Foot Media.